All right, folks, welcome to another video talking about this time recreational flying. And the FAA, this is uh, the middle of July of 2021, the FAA put out a new document that you need to be paying attention to. And, and I mean it. Th this is something that, unfortunately, I haven't seen a whole lot of content online, uh, part of the reason why I'm deciding to record this video. But uh, in this video, we're going to talk about this document called the Advisory Circular 9157 Charlie. This is a draft document that the FAA just put out, and they're asking for comments. So I'm going to tell you why you need to be paying attention. What's new in this advisory circular? This is the third version of the, the circular and we'll talk about what is new and why this is so important and why you should be leaving a comment and then how you're going to leave a comment. So let's get to it. So before we start this video, this may uh, end up being something that you guys may not enjoy a whole lot. I just want to say this. This is don't shoot the messenger. OK, uh, I teach the rules. I don't make them. I'm not part of the FAA. And this video is designed to really help you understand what the FAA is proposing to do and how you can write an intelligent comment back to the FAA to tell them what you think. If you've been following me for a while in Pilot Institute for a while, we talked about the notice of proposed rulemaking in the past for remote ID. And we ask you guys, along with a few other people in the industry, to write your comments to the FA. This is somewhat of a similar process, even though sending your comment is not as straightforward, but I'll show you how we do this. So the first thing is, where do you find this advisory circular? And you know what I did is I brought in my iPad for this video because I want to show you a couple of things on the iPad as well at the same time time and some of the notes that I wrote. But this advisory circular, I'm going to put the link down here. You can see it right here on the on the screen. This advisory circular is on this page. And if you go to it right away, you'll see at the top, actually, we have uh, AC9119. This is not the one. You need to keep scrolling until you see AC9157 Charlie. And this is title exception for, recreation, uh, for limited recreational operation of unmanned aircraft. If you fly your drone for recreational purposes and you've never seen this advisory circular, this is actually a perfect video because you should have seen this before. So a little bit of background on this. Why is this important? Why is this making sense? And maybe you are not so familiar with part 107 and maybe the recreational flying, but part 107 is the, the in capital letters, set of regulation that governs all of drone flying in the United States. Now, what the FAA did is they carved out a little section called 44809. And the reason it's called 44809 because that's the number of the regulation in the US code. A little portion of this is carved out out of part 107 as an exception that allows you to fly for recreational flying. 44809 is very straightforward if you think about it. It's eight sets of rules that basically tell you what you need to know. You need to follow all these rules. I have a video where I mention all different rules that you need to follow. And, um, and, and again, it's very straightforward. In the FAA recently, they added this, this new one called the trust exam. We also have a video on the trust exam. And we're also actually we can you can take the trust exam on our platform. But this is the latest thing that the FAA did. And out of all this, Congress in in uh, back in 2018, when they created the Reauthorization Act for the FAA, they created 44809. And Congress basically asked the FAA to create a whole bunch of rules for recreational flyer. And so, if you look at the list, like I said, very simple. You have flying for recreational purposes, staying within visual line of sight, don't interfere with aircraft, get airspace approval, stay below 400 feet, take the trust exam, register your aircraft. Those are the basic rules that you have to follow in order to fly legally. But in this regulation, there is no real mention of certain things. So for example, in part 107, you have visibility requirement. You have a certain distance from clouds. You have rules about not flying over people. You have rules about not flying over moving vehicles. Flying at night, there is some requirements, speed limits, and all of that. So all of this is not covered in 44809, which often surprises people. People say, well, can I fly over people? Well, if you look at 44809, technically you can, but in here, there is one section in 44809, which is called CBO guidelines, community based organization guidelines. And under these guidelines, you have to follow a set of CBO guidelines. And you say, I see, I get this question all the time. It's like, what's a CBO? 
Do I need to be a member of it? Where do I find the guidelines? Do I have to really follow these? And the answer is yes. One of the bullet points in 44.809 is you have to follow CBO guidelines. Now, the trick is at the moment, as I'm recording this, the FAA has not come up with a standard to select CBOs. So technically in the world right now, in July of 2021, there is no real FAA approved CBOs. This advisory circular that we're talking about today is ready to accomplish just that. It is designed to give um, CBOs that want to apply some guidance on how they should do it. This old advisory circular, the one before this, the Bravo version, was about eight pages long, okay? The new one is 19 pages long. Why? And the reason is because of CBO guidelines. This is why you need to be paying attention to this video because now the FAA has created this whole set of CBO guidelines and potentially these can become your rules as well. Now remember I said on 44809, there's only eight rules that you have to follow. Well, one of these rules is you have to follow CBO guidelines. Now these CBO guidelines can open up a whole bunch of different regulation. If your CBO that you select says you can't fly over people, well, guess what? Because you have to follow guidelines, you can't fly over people. If this CBO says you can fly at night, then same thing. You're going to have to follow CBO guidelines, even though it's not in 44809. Indirectly, it is in 44809 because it's in, in CBO guidelines. Does that make sense? This is always a part that was confusing to people and still is because, well, because the FAA hasn't selected CBOs yet, but they're going to do this with this document because this document highlights everything that needs to be done. So why eight pages? Why is there eight more pages in here? Well, there's eight more pages because the FAA has something in there called recommended safety procedures. That's in page 3.3-3 if you want to see it. And in here, if we go take a look at the document, we will see on page 3-3, I'm going to scroll to it right here, you see that there's a whole bunch of guidelines. And the first one it says in 3.4.3.1.1, <laughs> it says uh, restriction on flying over people. Restriction on flying over people right here. It says establishing buffer areas between an aircraft uh, planned flight path and any people in the area. Now you're going to say, this is not FA regulation. This is something that the CBOs are going to put in place. And you're right. This is something that the CBOs may put in place because the FA in here says, the FA recommends that a comprehensive safety guideline should include at least the following. This is a recommendation. The FA is basically saying, well, if you want to get approved, we highly recommend that you put these things into your CBO guidelines. They're not saying you have to. They're saying it's highly recommended. So you read between the lines, okay? Also in here, what you see is hazardous material or weapons. There are going to be restrictions from CBOs because they don't exist in 44809. Uh, prohibition on engaging in careless and reckless behavior. This should be everywhere, right? This should be in very general. Now, if we keep going in here, at the bottom, we have uh, 3.4.3.3.1 in this section right here. It says first person view procedures. Now, the FAA wants to put FPV procedures in place. The first one is that the visual observer must be co-located and in direct communication. And we can see this on page 3.5 right here. It says visual observer must be in direct communication with the FPV flyer must be in direct communication with the FPV flyer. Somewhere else in this uh, section in here, it says, without the use of technological assistance. I'm gonna get back to this because this is very important. It also says in here, FPV flyers must have the capacity to see the aircraft at all time. Although a visual observer may be watching the UA, the FPV flyer must ensure that throughout the operation of the UA, he or she would have the ability to immediately see the UA if the FPV was removed. Let's get back to this, because this is a point of confusion from people all the time. They say, do I have to have a, a visual observer? Yes, you do. Again, remember, don't shoot the messenger. This is what the FAA is saying. Yes, you have to have a visual observer with you. That visual observer must be able to see the aircraft at all time, which means that, and it also says they must be co-located to the pilot. It also says in here that at all time, if the pilot were to remove the goggles, he or she must be able to see the aircraft. So some people say, well, I can have a visual observer a mile down the road and, uh, and I'm still satisfying the requirements. Not so much because the visual observer must be co-located and in direct communication. And then in here it says direct communication. If we go back to page 2.2, which is a little bit before right here, 
In the VLOS, this is the entire section about visual line of sight right here. The visual observer must be standing close enough to the recreational flyer to be able to communicate directly with him or her without the use of technological assistance and without creating a distraction to the recreational flyer. This is if you use a VO in general, not just for FPV, but especially for FPV, this is going to apply. So you gotta be careful here. You gotta be careful. This, this is the guidance from the FA. This is what they're gonna look at when they start asking you questions. So this is part of the reason why this is eight pages long is because we have FPV procedures. If we go to page 3.6, you will see in here as well that there is information about night flying. There's also information about maintenance and procedures, maintenance, inspections, and procedures on page 3.5 and 3.6. Night operation, I find something interesting in here. There's two interesting points. Now they're adding the requirement for a light vi uh, visible from three statute miles. Again, this is if the CBOs decide to adopt this regulation that's in here, not regulation, this guidance that's in here, okay? It also says in here something that I found interesting. In addition to uh, UA lightning guidelines for flying at night in unlit or low, lit or low light areas, the safety guidelines should also permit members to conduct recreational flights at night without requiring UA lightning uh, in areas that are sufficiently illuminated so that members can maintain V loss of the aircraft throughout the flight. This is not in part 107. There is no in part 107 language that says if it's well lit, you don't have to have the lights on, but it's in here. It's part of the guidance in here. I thought this was an interesting point. Um, there's also information in here about medical condition. Again, this is the eight pages of, of stuff that was added. Uh, the FA would like to see that uh, there is something about physical and mental condition, about the use of alcohol, the use of drugs, the use of the uh, I'm safe checklist, because this is not, again, part of 44809. So they're using the CBO guidelines to add restrictions, limitations, guidelines, whatever you want to call them. Something in here about emergency procedures. Um, I didn't find anything bad, not that, you know, um, in, in the emergency procedures, I think it's important. An important point in here, safety event reporting. They would like to see the CBOs re uh, push the members to report when there is a safety event that happens. I put a bunch of notes in here for myself that I'm gonna comment to the FA. Loss of navigation function. What does that really mean? Functional failure of the UA. Can you give us examples? One that I really didn't care for is recreational flyer errors. Does the FA really expect that every recreational flyer is gonna report when they make an error? What's an error? What, how do you define it? What's I think this is a little bit of, a, of an overreach. This is just my personal opinion. Um, so these are all the things that were added into this document, which is why I think, again, you need to be paying attention because you need to become aware of what is in this document and all the information that's in here. What else is in here that's not related to the CBO guidelines? There was a good clarification in page 2.3 about a flying from the top of a building. This is a confusion that we hear all the time for recreational flyer. If you're at the top of a building, you cannot use that and add 400 feet on top of it. So it says in here, for example, a UAS engaged in recreational operations under 44809 um, may not be launched from a 10 story rooftop and fly up an additional 400 feet. This is very important. This is very important right here because a lot of people think, well, I can fly 400 feet on top of a building. This is only a part 107 rule. This is only a part 107 rule. So I'm glad that they added uh, this information in here. Uh, I think there's a necessary uh, clarification that's required in uh, section 2.2.6 right here. Uh, there's no mention of what to do in class E3 and class E4. This may be more technical for this video. I'm not gonna uh, bother you with the details, but nowhere in here, it mentions information about uh, what to do in class B, C, D, and E2, but nothing about class E3 and E4, which are extensions to class Delta and class Charlie airspace on the ground. So I think there needs to be information. I'm gonna put that in my comment. Also on page 2.4, which talks about reg uh, registration in 2.2.8, uh, there is no mention of uh, the exemption of drones that are sub 250 grams, 0 0.55 pounds. That needs to be added in here, I think. And then there was a good mention in here at one point that says, 
Uh, however, this is on page 2.2. However, an operator does not need to be a member of a CBO to fly under its safety guidelines. This is important. People have been saying, well, do I have to pay to join the CBO? You don't. You don't. You can just download their guidelines and follow them. You don't have to be a member. And the FAA was very clear about this because, well, because they don't want to push people to pay money for something that they may or may not need. So, again, I'm providing you information here. What can you do about it? If you don't agree with any of this, submit your comments to the FAA. The link is down here. If you look at how you do this, when you are on the link right here, there is a section that says draft document comment grid. And if you tap on it, then it's gonna take you to a Word document that you can fill out. So you can put your information in here, follow uh, the stuff, and then there is an address at the top of uh, where it needs to be submitted. So make sure you send your comments to the FAA about this. This is very much you have until August 9. This is very much like a, a notice of proposed rulemaking, even though this is not a rule. This is a notice of proposed advisory circular, if you want to look at it this way. Um, I want to give you a little bit of my personal opinion. I typically don't do this in, in my videos. I try to keep it as informational as possible, but um, I think some of these clarifications are welcome. They're in here. I think I'm glad to see that uh, the, the, the mention about, you know, flying from the top of a building. Uh, I'm glad to see some night information. I think the lights are very important to have on your drone. I think the guidance to fly over people is also required because uh, this is something that can be pretty dangerous if it's not done correctly. Um, but I also think that this is going to upset quite a few people that are flying recreationally that already are having a tough time with over-regulation from the FAA of their hobby. Uh, I'm not saying it's a, a right or wrong feeling. It is the way that people feel. The idea behind wanting people to fly safely is to make rules and guidelines that are as easy as possible. This is not part 107, right? This is recreational flying. Recreational flying should remain simple. Trust is out there. Trust takes about 10 or 15 minutes. And because it's simple, because, because people can just read a few slides, answer the, the quiz, know the basic eight things that you have to do, I don't think we need to make this so complex that nobody's going to read the rules or nobody's going to want to follow the rules. Adding five or six pages of CBO guidelines, I think is a bit too much. The CBOs have a choice. The CBOs are going to have a choice to either go with everything that's in this guideline. This is only recommendations from the FAA. They're only saying you should do this if you want to get approved. I don't know that the FAA is going to hold it against them if they don't, but who knows? The last thing that I want to see is 44809 plus CBO guidelines should never be the same as part 107. This is, this is not the, the, the purpose of 44809 is never to be as complex and as regulated as part 107. And, and I may take some flag for this, but I believe that we need to keep these guidelines as simple as possible. Otherwise, we're going to lose people. People are just going to say, ain't going to happen. I'm not going to follow this. I'm not going to read through five or six pages. And maybe this is ir ir irresponsible on my part. I'm not sure. But um, I, I'm just, I'm a little bit disappointed. Let's put it this way. So... That's it. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you guys leave your comments. I'm sure you'll have a lot of comments on this. Please, please, please submit your comments to the FA. They're looking for feedback. So let's provide them feedback. Let's be polite. Let's be to the point. Let's be factual and, uh, and tell them what you would like to see in here. And I know I'm going to work on my comments. I'm going to submit it. And that's all I have. So fly safe. Send your comment. Like, subscribe. Leave your rude remarks down in here. And I'll talk to you guys on the next video.